If you're someone who has always wanted to get consistent clients in their online service-based business without the pressure to post on social media, I made this podcast specifically for you. I'm Leslie Stevens, and I am so excited to welcome you to the Not an Influencer show, where we chat about other organic marketing strategies that you can use to bring clients into your business quickly and easily, and the tangible tips for you to move forward faster in your business, and the stories of the entrepreneurs who are doing the same every single day. You do not have to be an influencer to be an impact maker and a successful online business owner. If you have ever spent way too much time and energy pumping out endless content for social media with little to no clients in return, let's stop doing it the hard way and let's do it the easy way with the client connection method. I teach this method in depth in my free training, how to book consistent clients without having to post on social media. The link is in the description. Go ahead, click it to grab your spot. I am so excited to have Noelle here with us today. So Noelle, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? Yes, my name is Noelle Powers and I am the business vision coach at InFactor Coaching. And basically I've been a business coach for about 20 years and I decided, I woke up one day and said, hey, I wanna do uh, the one thing I wanted to find, what's my one focus I'm gonna do? And that's what InFactor became all about. Um, helping entrepreneurs and CEOs lead and grow with vision so that they could go out into the world, maximize their engagement and profit, basically so you can make that human impact that you're looking to make while making a good living. I love it, I love it. And I know you have an exercise to set everybody up to really take in all of this information and get the most out of it. So can you set us up for that? Yes, absolutely. So everyone, I want you to think of the word business. And I know a lot of things are going to be moving around and around in your head swirling and it's kind of overwhelming. So what I want you to do is to take one minute and forget everything you know about business and being an entrepreneur. I want you to close your eyes and take a couple of deep breaths. Then I want you to see a big reset button in front of you. It's big and it's green and I want you to press it because today we're not going to load you full of more information. We're going to give you a strategy and even a mindset for you to take what you're already giving people and create a whole different depth so that you can build a personal brand people love to buy from. I love it. So can you tell us a little bit about what the N factor, what's different about the N factor than what other business coaches provide? Certainly. um, I believe that uh, entrepreneurs have too much information to act on these days. Um, I really focus on the impact that you choose to make through your vision um, because it's so easy to get lost in. I believe these days, most of what people teach is you're learning business processes and tactics. But if you look at the most successful entrepreneurs, frankly, that you and I love, uh, for me, I've got my own pantheon of Steve Jobs and Sarah Blakely. Uh, These are people who started a brand with 12 people which is what I like to look at is think small is Mm -hmm. what's the impact you want to make and how do you find a group of 12 people who want what you have and how do you get them to that aha moment where you've given them the transformation they need? Because that's actually how you build a brand people love. I feel like sometimes it's easy to get lost in the noise of uh, I need a hundred customers I need a thousand likes on Facebook or something else. But the truth is it's a deconstruction process. You need to unlearn what's not going to work for you and plant the seed of exactly what is. And that is the inspiration you have. Uh, I want to make this positive change. That's where it all starts. Then you create a vision around it. And then honestly, the rest of it is you have to go out and create a conversation with that one group of people you like. And that's where I, that is the one tactic. That's the only tactic you need. Um, before the digital age, I don't know if you remember this, but as a teenager, right? 
If you wanted to market to a large audience or find any one audience, right, you had to have resources. You were the mm -hmm. government, you were a marketing agency, or you were a large corporation with a, with a budget. But yeah. now, do you know how simple it is? You know, I always say, you know, hold up the cell phone. Yeah. If you have a group of people you love to serve, go start a conversation with them. Like mm -hmm. I say, this is not a business process. Vision is very much about it's a human element. It's something that you already know and love. And now you can go and start a conversation with those people. So like I say, deconstruct. Don't think this is what I have to do for my business. Think this is how I connect with the people I'm going to have a lifelong conversation with. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And you said think small. And I think that's so powerful because this world of social media, people are like, to run my business, I need to have 10,000 followers or 50,000 followers. And it's like, well, is your business even equipped to serve that many people? Is your mes message even going to be equipped to support that many people? If you think about the people you're serving, how you're actually serving them, you might only need 10 people in front of you. And it's about yeah. getting in front of the right ones and communicating the right things. And right. like you mentioned, the conversation you're having yes. where social media is like people are talking at people so much yes. and hoping they're listening. And that's yes. why there's such a big disconnect. Yes. And so I, I want to go into this just a little bit. Uh, one of the people I write about in my book, her name is Sarah Blakely, and everyone knows what Spanx is, but a lot of people mm -hmm. don't understand the story of why it's so amazing. So Sarah Blakely, uh, you know, starts out with a pair of pantyhose. She says, hey, I want to wear these white pants. And there she was wearing pantyhose in the southern heat, delivering fax machines on her back. Uh -huh. And she said, um, I, I'm going to cut the bottom off of these pantyhose and I'm going to wear those white pants tonight. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, she says, this is ridiculous. You know, <laughs> I should be able to wear the clothes I want to wear. But mm -hmm. when she saw the difference that that undergarment made, she took $5,000 out of her savings account. And she says, I'm going to change the world for women. She says, they have been taught that beauty is pain. And she mm -hmm. says, I'm going to change that. And she says, but I only have $5,000. So she kept her, her day job. And this is what she did. She went out and she started this conversation with um, the hosiery mills. Mm -hmm. And she heard the word no for two years. Why would we do that? There were no women making hosiery for women. Mm -hmm. No one made decisions. So she finally said, well, here's my prototype. She spent half of her $5,000 just to create the prototype. And no is all she ever heard. So she says, I'm a saleswoman. I'm going to go into Newman Marcus. And I said, make an appointment with me. We're going to go into the bathroom here. And they're like, okay, well, we've never done this before. But she says, okay, this is direct. This is a conversation with a real person. She walks mm -hmm. into the bathroom and comes out and she's wearing her white pants with no Spanx. And she said, and she points to her butt and she says, this is all cellulite and panty lines. And she says, I'm going to, I'm going to show you something here. She goes back in, comes back with those Spanx on. And, and she says, you know, this is a transformation that women are looking for today and no one is touching it. So you hear the story that she took $5,000 became the world's youngest billionaire and she never spent a penny on advertising. Mm -hmm. And so what I like about her story is that she went to Newman Marcus. They said, we'll buy 5,000 of your pantyhose, whatever. Why not? And she doctored it. She says, I know women. I'm going to go there. She was still working nine to five in another job. She set up a booth in Newman Marcus. And she said, here's a picture of my butt and without Spanx <laughs> and a picture of my butt with Spanx. And I was talking about someone, a direct conversation with women. She paid all of her friends and family 20 bucks to buy Spanx from Newman Marcus. Because <laughs> she knew the power was in 20 women. She already knew. Yeah. She was giving these people pizza and Pepsi. Uh, mm -hmm. to put these Spanx products on because her competitors only used mannequins. 
Mm -hmm. If you can imagine, she made it all about human connection. She says, if this is not a real connection and that's why she didn't pay other people to market or anything, she says, Hey, this is a real conversation between two women. She says, don't worry, honey. I got your butt covered. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much, but it is about that real connection and that real type of communication. So how would you recommend people who are kind of stuck in this social media world to I'm so pull glad themselves. you asked. Yeah, We're going to do an exercise. That. It's a total Perfect. debunk the junk. It's an exercise. I want you, our listeners, to think, if I could only accomplish one thing in my business, what would it be? It's going to clear a lot of clutter. And you're going to, something is going to come to your mind. A group of people you love to serve. Maybe it's a, as an entrepreneur, you see the world in problems and solutions. This is if you could make one change with the energy you have, what would it be? And then that changes the game because then you look at, okay, who is this one person I'm going to serve? What am I going to do for them? And then where are they? You can find mm -hmm. them now because they're in forums and they're in groups. And what you can do at this point is go, well, I have an idea of how I want to help them, but let me ask them. I'm going to go directly to them as a source. Because when you start asking people, um, who here wants to lose 20 pounds? All right. How long have you had that on? Okay. What do you believe is the biggest problem you have with doing this? So you see, people used to um, think, well, when I get successful in my business, then I can hire a marketing department. Then I can get to know my customer. And I'm telling you, it's backwards. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying everything most people think about business, they need to forget about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a lot about respecting where you are in your business. Because I think as entrepreneurs, we see people who are way up there and we're trying to watch what they're doing and listening to what they're doing and they have the the capacity to have a huge marketing department and all of that yes. and then the big the big people the big businesses are wishing they could have engagement and what's engagement it's having the real conversation with people and i say sometimes as especially solopreneurs people disqualify themselves mm -hmm. i don't have this so i mm -hmm. can't have that and it's absolutely not true. And so I do like to talk to about some of the big guys who the only reason why uh, they have a brand people love is because they said their brand is, this is the promise I make to you. They make mm -hmm. a promise, they over deliver, and it's to a group of people they know inside out. Uh, Steve Jobs did not sell computers to the mass market because that would have been suicide. He was a computer geek. He spent his, his uh, youth wandering between different engineers' garages, trying to put together his toys in the garage. Um, so what he did when he, he said, hey, wise, we're going to create a computer that's like all in one piece. Mm -hmm. First time ever. And he says, we know every geek and computer nerd in, the, in all of Silicon Valley. It's like, let's just go talk to like 12 of them and mm -hmm. see what we can do. Mm -hmm. And that's the Apple brand. Yeah. Right. Well, it's like you people. mentioned before, it's going to the people, not waiting for them. The you know, I hear attraction marketing all the time and like, just put yourself out there and the right people will be attracted to you. I'm like, that's well, right. go to the people and talk to them first, find out what they really that's want, right. communicate with them get into their deepest desires, understand that's them right. from the inside out. That's, and, that's then. Right. and then a brand only works through trust because this exactly. is this kind of on its own plane, but trust is the only thing that, um, that is going to work as an individual to, to build the personal brand. And the only way to build trust is make small promises and over deliver. And you mm -hmm. can do that because you're on the pulse. Uh, you can do that when you give them a trial and say, oh, here's the PDF. What else can I do for you? 
Mm -hmm. What else? Here's a survey. If you could have pink, green, or purple flowers in your garden, let me know. Um, so sometimes our prejudice against ourselves don't match the precedence of um, of customers. For instance, we were in the um, lowest trust decade of all human history after uh, 2010. Uh, mm -hmm. People's general trust level for companies and government and just whatever else was at an all-time low. Um, but that the, when you um, are dealing with people face-to-face, -face, their prejudice works in your favor. About 70% of consumers trust an individual over a company. Mm -hmm. So forget disqualifying yourself for being an individual without this department and this many likes and whatever else. You don't understand that that's your biggest asset. You get to go right in there. You get to fly under the radar and you get to stick as close to that person as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So when you started your business, did you have any trouble bringing clients in at the beginning? Um, it, yes, because I came from a different world. I've been coaching and training in, um, in, in some of the large organizations for about 20 years. And it used to be all in person. People would mm -hmm. only take your training if they could fly in and sit in a chair in front of you. So mm -hmm. the digital business space was fairly new to me. So I did have to get used to um, a different flow. And so mm -hmm. what I did is I did research for a year. And I mean, like, just get in the trenches with the people. I was on leadership forums, entrepreneur groups. And I said, hey, what are these people's biggest problems? Like, I'd look at the posts, procrastination. 71 <laughs> posts. <laughs> uh, I love what I do, but I'm not a salesperson. 150 mm -hmm. posts. <laughs> I couldn't check. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, right. And so I, I kind of, like I said, understood that person. What's their insecurity? And what's, how is their insecurity keeping their greatest strength from coming forward? And something I wanted to talk about a little bit today is when you're building a personal brand, how to, how to um, attract the right person and build lifetime loyalty with your vision in one hand and your mission in the other. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't use the two together. And that's a big part of how I train people because um, there are two completely different things. They are interrelated but there, there are different applications. And a, a business without a very established personal vision um, is going to be more trying, less successful, and just less um, malleable in how you're approaching it. And so I wanna like share some examples. Um, yeah. Your mission is what you do for a living. So for me, I use a trademarked 12-week shakedown to help CEOs and entrepreneurs instantly lead and grow their companies with vision so that they can maximize engagement and profit. Now, this is convenient. It's online. It's global. Um, it has a start and a finish date. It's 12 weeks. It talks about something very specific that someone's going to get. It's a training. I say, here is my proven formula. After 20 years of helping entrepreneurs unlock their potential. So here's the thing about the vision. If you can't describe what you do in 10 seconds or less, people shut you out. And sometimes we coaches and consultants, we're so awesome, but we forget that people have an attention span. And if you don't know exactly what you do for, to give people results, you can't deliver it. It's yeah, kind of, people we get too this. excited. They get too excited because there are so many hats that we wear as well that it's like, that's oh, right. I do this, but I also do this and I do that. <laughs> but that's right. And now um, that's, that is something you do as a profession, but that is not who strictly, that's not exactly who you are as an entrepreneur. This is a set of skills mm -hmm. that you do. Now, your vision, on the other hand, is based on your inspiration. And it's a little more abstract, but I want to tell you 
what it is and how it helps. For instance, my vision is to help entrepreneurs unlock their true potential by becoming visionary leaders because their real goal is to make a positive impact on the lives of millions of people. So this is a bigger thing. And my mission is something I do a set number of hours per day, but my vision about the ultimate takeaway, my ultimate aim, that's my life work. Mm -hmm. That is something where I climb up onto the mountaintop and proclaim it as long and as far as I can. Um, and here's what a lot of people don't know about vision because they think it's like just a mental image that people make, or it's a statement you put on your wall and that can be mm -hmm. part of the process, but that's not the, the real power of it. The power of vision is ideals. When you communicate your ideals to people who share your ideals, it's actually how they make decisions. They mm -hmm. say, I love Leslie Stevens. She's my brand. I trust her. She gives me these solutions. And that's where lifetime loyalty comes from. Because um, in marketing, people don't make the buying decision with their rational brain. We'll go right back to Simon Sinek with Start mm -hmm. With Why. They make decisions with their limbic system. It goes emotions, yep. beliefs, and values. So as soon as something pings on this person shares my values, you mm -hmm. express your ideals. And that's where lifetime customers come in. Like the Apple tribe, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Steve Jobs, he tells them the story. These are our ideals. This is our tribe. And talk about a real tribe of people. Their year actually starts with the same event, right? Mm -hmm. The product unveiling. There's a story. There's innuendo. Mm -hmm. People step up and say, uh, here's what he did. He thought different and I'm going to think different. And here's how I'm going to add to the story. Um, so, but you don't get that by sharing a mission of what you do. You mm -hmm. share that with the vision of the ideals that will unify people in a cohesive whole. And just a couple of things. Um, we talked about in a forum, you talk about why all these entrepreneurs aren't doing what they really believe they should be doing. And it kind of, it's these circles of lack of confidence, procrastination, imposter syndrome. And this is my personal favorite. I'm not a salesperson. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'm here to tell you that vision is there to provide you a certain level of strength and resilience where you can get out of your own head and out of your own way. It's a way to get over yourself. It's like for the business owner to do get something that's yourself. bigger it's, than them. It's not about you. Yep. Your vision is always about other people. And it's just like, you know, you might have a lot of reasons why you don't eat lunch when you're hungry, but when your kid is hungry, you always go and feed them. <laughs> yeah. So it's a way to short circuit those insecurities and to put the focus somewhere completely different. Um, mm -hmm. And like I said, without vision, you get stuck on day to day. But with vision, you think 20 years out. You think present circumstances mean nothing. Mm -hmm. When I started my new company, I didn't have customers mm -hmm. because that's what vision is. It's this big, beautiful, empty bucket waiting to be filled, but you don't know how it's going to happen. The mission can tell you how it's going to happen, but the vision is just this animating current and you mm -hmm. even open yourself to it. I know there are no guarantees, but I'm going to honor this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Vision is so powerful to get you out of your own head and get you unstuck. And it's the same thing. It helps your customer also be a part of something that's bigger than them. Be like, this is possible. They can, they can get into that vision that you have and that you're creating. And then they become a part of that story. And that's what brand is. And that's yes. where you thrive and that's where they want to be. That's that, that attraction where they start coming to you, but you have to be the one 
to start it with nothing and just believe right. and trust and then That's make right. a plan. That's right. And you have to come back to it because honestly, money comes and goes. But that vision, uh, like I wrote about Harley Davidson, they were the biggest motorcycle company in the in the world and in the country. Then the Great Depression came and they were wiped out. Uh, mm -hmm. They shut down the factory. Uh, they had no sales. Uh, they mm -hmm. were severely compromised. They had to do like a licensing thing. But the, this man, literally Bill Harley said, here we are, um, uh, Harley Davidson, this community is our world. It is our life. What is our legacy? What are we going to leave for these people? And mm -hmm. you, if you can't double down on vision and what he did is he, he invented the knucklehead in six months. But so I always have this challenge. If, if your company only had six months to live, what would you accomplish? Because I'd say at least every quarter, you have to double down on your vision. Go, what I'm doing maybe from day to day, maybe that's not the big picture. Let me step back and go, let me make, just make sure you know what that ultimate takeaway is for mm -hmm. other people. Um, because sometimes we communicate everything except the ultimate takeaway. And yeah. um, that's like digging a well just before you hit the water. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I had a mentor and I love jogging people's minds through real stories um, because mm -hmm. it, it, it's been very powerful to me. But I had a mentor um, who kind of taught me the curve of going online in business. And I bought her programs. I loved her. I watched all her YouTube videos. I did everything she asked me to do. But one day she converted me into the tribe mm -hmm. because she created a podcast and the name of it was work less, earn more. Taking back entrepreneurialism. Yeah. And I thought it was interesting, right? I done her techniques, great mindset, great skill set. But the day that she gave me the ultimate takeaway was the day that was the point of no return. That's mm -hmm. where she and I just locked in. And, you know, suddenly the great thing about vision is there's no separation between her and me now. Mm -hmm. And you have that that's common really place. powerful. And why would you be in business for yourself if you can't have that, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So what would you tell people to move forward faster in their business, three tangible things that they can do today. Absolutely. Okay. So first thing, define your mission. Okay. Who do you love to serve? Really picturing in your head, you can only accomplish one thing. Uh, the human brain does one thing at a time really well. It's like a computer. You can only hit one button at a time. <laughs> so set that as a command. Who's the one person you love to serve? Um, what is their problem? What is the solution? And then give a specific number in your mission. It can be 12 weeks. It could be four steps, but make it a proven formula and start talking to people about it. The second is create a vision of think 20 years out. What are the ideals? What is the ultimate takeaway for people? And then I'd say once a week, you need to extend yourself as far as you can. And what I mean is this is like stretch goal time. Think absolutely everything is possible. So once a week, I want you to act on the infinite. I want you to go to the mountaintop. I want you to say, this is an idea I love. I'm going to write an article about it. I'm going to post it. Uh, I personally said, I'm going to create my personal brand by writing articles to audiences of a million people every month. Remember, starting from zero. And I said, mm -hmm. small is good. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm one it. person, they're going <laughs> to listen to me, right? Okay, three months later, just every single week, I, I put a pitch in. 
to editors in Brains Magazine and Forbes Magazine. And, right? These people, this audience is the people I already love to serve. And I'm going to prick them right in the heart here. Um, and it happened in about three months. Because what I learned is if you don't extend yourself, there's no room for you to grow. Mm -hmm. So about once a week or maybe once a month, you need to find the mountaintop to climb up to. Because if you are in the practice of extending yourself to the world, they'll come right back and meet you. I love it. I love it. And that way you don't get stuck in that day to day and you're not just in your business. You're also the visionary of your business and That's you step right. into that full entrepreneurial role. That's right, because there. entrepreneurs are here to make changes. We're not mm -hmm. here to sell programs. That's the how. That's not, that's not the point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So right. where can people find you? Yes. Um, you can find me on empoweredlife.com. Uh, you can join my email list there where every week I give you an in factor, which is a tip that unlocks your power as an entrepreneur. And you can read my blog. And of course, uh, since you listen to the end, you get a free PDF. We'll leave you a link about the greatest tips on building your personal brand from America's Best of Entrepreneurs. Amazing. And yes, I will provide all of those links wherever we post this. So thank you so much for talking with us today, Noelle. It was, it was so much fun. Thank you. And I, I really wish everyone the greatest of luck as you pursue the biggest opportunity you can find. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> want to learn more about different marketing strategies to bring consistent clients into your business without feeling the pressure to post on social media, make sure you watch the free training on the client connection method, which is in the description below. Thanks for hanging out with us today.